All right, what's up guys? I'm gonna be teaching you five things that you should try in a lucid dream. These are things that I've tried myself. These are things that I've had great success with. And more than anything, right, these, these are actually interesting to try. These aren't just like your standard, you know, run around or have sex things. These are actually really interesting things that you should really try because they're gonna broaden your horizons. They're gonna make you experience and realize things that you didn't know you could do in a lucid dream. Because for most of us, a lucid dream is just like a, an adventure playground. You know, you're sort of trying things out. You don't really know what you can do. But I want to teach you these things because these are things that when you try them, they'll really change your understanding of what a lucid dream is. So the first one is going to be to ask yourself or ask the dream a question. Now, this sounds simple and it really is simple to do, but the results you're going to get from this are profound. The subconscious mind can answer almost any question, but it can do this in a way that you would never expect. So what you're actually doing when you ask the dream itself a question is you're asking your subconscious mind. And because it's your subconscious, right, you don't control it, the answers you're gonna get are gonna be completely random. You won't ever expect the answers to be anything normal. So try becoming lucid and then asking your subconscious mind or literally just saying out loud in the dream, what is the meaning of life or why am I here? What should I do as a career? And just listen to the answers that it gives you. It won't always give you like a physical answer, like a, a speech answer. It sometimes might give you an interpretive answer, like it might take you to a certain place or show you a certain thing. The second one is to try and become a different life form. Try and shapeshift into an animal and see what it's like to live as an ant, for example. This is something that you can do fairly easily, um, and I, I explained how to do this in my Lucid Superpowers book, which, you know, link will be in the description, as always. But this is something that will really let you experience life from another point of view. The third thing, which is sort of branching off from the first thing, is to ask your subconscious mind to surprise you. And I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen because this is really interesting. This is actually quite a special one. Ask the dream itself to give you a surprise, right? Teach you something you didn't know. The fourth thing you can do in a lucid dream is something that I really wish more people would actually take notice of and do. And that is to improve your skills. So if you didn't already know, in a lucid dream, by practicing something, by practicing either your social skills or rock climbing, martial arts, painting, drawing, throwing darts, whatever it is you want to practice, you will actually improve at that skill in waking life. Now, this has to be said with a little caution. You have to actually practice the thing in, in real life as well. You have to actually practice it for real and then practice it again in a lucid dream to get the results, right? But the results are really profound. If you do something, say if you're a darts player and you practice your dart throwing three, four hours a week, if you then practice another set of darts techniques in the dream, in a, in a lucid dream, you will improve at your darts capability. You know, you will actually become a better darts player just by practicing it in a lucid dream. This is how I was able to pass my driving test, you know, much faster than I was supposed to pass it because I was practicing the same techniques and maneuvers in a lucid dream every night. Another really interesting thing you can do is to ask dream characters really profound questions and to try and ask or get a lucid dream character to become lucid with you. So if you think of yourself in a lucid dream as the main player, you're the main character in the driver's seat, right? So you, everything you see is almost like your domain. You can, in your mind, you think, I can control all of this. It starts to get really interesting and strange when you ask a dream character to become lucid with you and to start helping you do things. It really starts to be profound because you notice that the dream character that you've asked to become lucid starts to act independently of you and starts to surprise you to the point where you don't really know if you're lucid or awake or you know you don't really know if this is your lucid dream and it starts to get really confusing but at the same time very interesting and eye-opening. So a thing to remember with all of these is that as I've said before a sailor doesn't control the sea and what I mean by that is when you're having a lucid dream although you are in control of yourself and what you're doing you can't always control every single aspect of the dream and you shouldn't try to because what you don't really need to for one but also there's no way you can ever control every single detail of the dream because it's just too complex and you don't really need to your subconscious mind is great at doing it anyway without you even thinking about it so try and just stay humble and try and stay in a position where you're open to new ideas and you're not just treating lucid dreaming as like a fun game because although it is fun it also is a very profound experience and it is at the end of the day, you're walking through your subconscious mind as if it was a playground. So you need to be respectful of that and respectful of yourself. 
Um, but that being said, always try new things, try new experiences. Don't just stick to the same old habits or you know things that you're going to do in a lucid dream. Try and always try new things. 